Hi everyone, welcome to the HO Scale Quincy Railroad layout update video. Got quite a bit done since the last video. As you can recall, I was waiting on track and a turnout for the two, two last remaining spur tracks I needed to lay. This one right here and the one over here, which as you can recall, I mentioned before, doesn't exist in real life. This is kind of really the only major track alteration I've made to the uh, prototype track plan at East Quincy. And I've, I've used it I've, I've installed it to uh, kind of make up for the fact that I'm not modeling Quincy Junction. It serves as an interchange track for cars coming in, in and out from the Union Pacific. And it also gives a reason for the locomotive to run around to the other end of the train, which uh, puts it on the front end or the front orientation for the locomotive, you know, a little bit for switching, which I like. I've also finished up the number 12 here this is a Pacific Northwest Resins uh, SW7 shell on a Proto 2000, an older Proto 2000 chassis. I painted it, put the decals on, all the little details. It's got the KV models, radiator, radiator core and grill, and the uh, fan, see-through grill. Um, I really like all the detail on this. I got the sheet metal pilots on it, and as you can see, the lettering says Sierra Pacific Industries, Susanville, California, as opposed to Quincy Railroad on the number five. But it does have the QRR under the cab window there. The, so basically, the Quincy Railroad actually had an isolated division over at Susanville because there was a Sierra Pacific Industries mill at Susanville on the old Southern Pacific branch. And when Southern Pacific decided they didn't want to operate it anymore, Sierra Pacific Industries took over and operated it themselves for their own benefit at the mill up to the interchange at Wendell. And number 12 was one of the two locomotives assigned there, the other being the number 1100, which was a ex-Southern Pacific TR6, EMD TR6, which is now preserved at the Portola Railroad Museum. And number 12 ended up back at Quincy after the Susanville operation shut down and it, it's kind of used as a backup for number five. Um, but it kept the Susanville paint scheme all the way until this day, as far as I know. And uh, I really like how this unit turned out. It's just waiting on a sound file. It runs great. Got the lights and everything in it. Uh, as we move on down here, this spur track does exist in real life. It's actually a little bit further. It comes off the main line uh, past this switch in real life, but I, I had to condense it down a bit. Um, this is mainly used for overflow car storage, and there's always a hopper car out here on the end, an SP, XSP ballast hopper that's had it, the sides cut down a little bit. As I understand, this hopper car came over from the Susanville operation, and it's the only piece of rolling stock the Quincy Railroad currently owns, uh, and they use it very rarely for MOW ballast work. And since nobody makes that particular model of Southern Pacific ballast hopper in HO scale, I'm either going to have to convert it from an existing model, heavily modify it, or scratch build it or 3D print it, which won't be too bad of a, or too much of a project since I've, I've had experience and all that, but I was kind of hoping that something would be pretty close and I wouldn't, wouldn't have to do a lot of work to it, but oh well. The Santa Fe hopper is just filling in right now. I've sketched out with a pen here uh, the kind of road arrangement for East Quincy. Mill Creek Road crosses the tracks right here and then it, it has a intersection with Lee Road which will run across the creek here and there'll be a, a little bridge here that will mask the transition between the creek bed there and the backdrop and it'll kind of disappear into the backdrop. All this will be paved like I said before from this line over, um, I'm going to really have to look into techniques for paving roads. I have paved roads plaster before, but I really want this to come out uh, really good as far as a, a uh, weathered asphalt road and basically lumber yard. So I'm going to have to look into some of the techniques that other people have used to achieve that effect because I uh, really want this to, to stand out. Uh, if you have any experience with that or know a, 
a good technique or a good resource, please comment in below and uh, I'll look into it. Over here, there'll be a chain link fence that'll run from the corner of the shop building along the backdrop across the creek here and it will terminate between the switch points and Lee Road here. That'll be the boundary for the, uh, the actual mill property itself, the fenced in part at least. And there'll be two little I-beam bridges that I gotta construct. I'll make those out of styrene for the uh, tracks right here over the creek. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, kind of building up the fleet of center beams. I've, I've ordered some of these. I think from now on I'm gonna order the Atlas ones if I can help it because they're pretty much the style that the Quincy uh, sees the most often. Um, you don't really see the the partition cars that have the the solid ends. I don't, I don't know the actual a uh, technical term for them offhand, but those aren't very uh, often seen. And the the opera window cars are are very rarely seen anymore, if not at all. So, kind of building up the fleet here of the more modern. 73 foot partition cars that Atlas produces. Anyway, that's the uh, state of the railroad right now. Um, everything's up and running, kind of just feeling out, out the operations here before I get dive into the scenery aspects, which will be the next step. Of course, the paving and the bridges are, I want to get those in before I start on any uh, dirt or ballast or anything like that. Well, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, there'll be more coming your way eventually. But uh, take care.